So this is the Acer Swift 3X, and aside from this blue hinge, it doesn't look too different from the Swift that's already available. But this Swift, this one has a secret surprise inside. This is one of the first laptops to use Intel's Iris Xe Max, and that's a new discrete graphics chip from Intel that gives it an edge over integrated graphics that you typically find in a thin and light laptop like this. It's also potentially uh, able to take a bite out of AMD's latest chips and NVIDIA's entry-level discrete graphics like the MX350. Now, this is a pre-production sample, so it's not 100% what you'll find when it goes on sale in December, starting at $900. And the configuration I have here is expected to be around $1,200 with an 11th gen Core i7, 16 gigs of memory, and a one terabyte NVMe SSD and it'll be in blue, not gold. But again, because it's an early sample, I don't have any hard numbers on performance. Uh, and this configuration, while it has discrete graphics, isn't made for gaming, uh, but it's more for some of the basic needs of a creator and creatives. So with this, uh, you'll be able to do things like light photo and video editing, basic graphic design. Uh, it's not going to replace a workstation, but it gives you something lightweight to get those things done when you're on the go, and it should have better battery life. Now, the idea essentially is that since you'll have both an Intel CPU and GPU, and they're designed to work together, so it'll be able to intelligently shift performance to whatever it is you're doing. And that should help with battery life. Uh, Acer says it'll get up to 17 hours, but that's going to depend on what you're doing. That's probably not going to be video editing, or gaming for that matter, because while it's not made for gaming, you can definitely game on it, uh, casual gaming at least, and uh, you can even do it while you're not plugged in. Uh, so that's what's inside the Swift 3X. Now, what about the rest, right? Well, you've got this nice 14-inch Full HD display, and it has 300-nit brightness and covers 72% NTSC color gamut, uh, but it also has a nice matte finish, so you're not fighting reflections. And when you lift the lid, the hinge is designed to lift the rear of the keyboard up so that you're uh, typing at a better angle. Now the keyboard itself is comfortable and it's backlit and the touchpad is smooth and responsive and there's a fingerprint reader here off to the side. And with the 11th gen Intel chips, you're also getting Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 and there is a single Thunderbolt 4 port. Um, it's disappointing not to find an SD or micro SD card slot here since this is designed for amateur creators but uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, what is nice though, is that it is really light. Um, it only weighs three pounds or 1.4 kilograms, which is really nice considering the potential performance here. Now, uh, it also has dual heat pipes to help keep this from getting too warm while it's on your lap, no matter what you're doing. Now, hopefully we'll get our hands on a full production version here in December to see how it measures up against the regular Swift 3 I tested early in the year with the AMD Ryzen 7 4700U in it. Now, what do you think? Do you think Intel can take on AMD and Nvidia in this space? Let us know in the comments and be sure to check out more laptop information and reviews on CNET.com and thanks for watching.